G'day everyone, welcome back to Fix It and Post. My name is Nick. Today we are gonna look at a really easy VFX shot that I think most people should be able to do, but the tools in After Effects are not easily laid out to be able to do this really simply. So I wanted to kind of guide you through it, hopefully get you through some of the difficult, quirky aspects of using this plugin called Mocha AE. Now Mocha AE is a fantastic plugin, but it does have a few weird quirks about it. So I'm gonna guide you through those today. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that the comp size of the shot you're gonna track is exactly the same size as the footage. So the easiest way to do this is to just grab your footage and just drag it down to this composition panel and it'll just create a new comp with exactly the same dimensions as the footage. As you can see here in the footage, it's 3,840 times 2160. And if we jump into the composition settings, it is exactly the same, which is exactly what we want. The track will not work if your settings are different from the footage. It'll actually make things a lot worse. We're just going to track five seconds of it because we don't need a lot of it. I'm going to change the name of the comp to track shot one. And then we'll jump into there and have a look. And as you can see in the shot here, it's moving this parallax. It's you know, it's as difficult as you're gonna get it apart from a hand moving in front of the shot, but that's, it's on green screen, so it's not the worst thing in the world. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the piece of footage and we're gonna to go to effect and we'll go down to Boris FX Mocha and go Mocha AE. Now the Mocha plugin will pop up and we're gonna click on the Mocha button and see what happens. Now, right now it's gonna say that the host is not set at full resolution, tracking reduced resolution can be faster, but it's less accurate. Do you wish to continue, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're gonna go cancel and we're gonna actually change this to full. And then when you click on this, it'll be all right. Make sure it is clicked on full. For some reason, Mocha doesn't seem to interpret the footage if it's not at full. I don't know why, but it doesn't. All right, so here we are in Mocha. You're not gonna have to know everything about this. You just have to know the basics of the things that we need to know. This button up here is gonna be your friend. This is where we're gonna spend most of our time. This button, which is the create X-Blind tool, this button, which is the show planar surface, and occasionally maybe we might use this, but it's only gonna be this button and this button we're gonna have a look at here today. So first up, let's grab the X-Spline tool and we we'll grab them here. And if you hold down Z, you can actually zoom in and zoom out where your mouse cursor is. So as you can see here, Z will do that. And if you hold down X, you can actually move it around as you do on the canvas and drag the canvas around. But we're gonna hold down Z and move in here, or Z for you Americans, and then press X to kind of get it down to around here. It's not moving the footage itself, it's just moving where the position of the viewer is. All right, so we've got our X tool here and we're just gonna draw our first coordinate here around this little X here, like so. And when you're done, press the right click and that'll seal it off. Now, with that highlighted, we're gonna go up here and we're gonna hold down this and it's gonna give us this little X with a plus on it. I'm gonna click on that. And that's just gonna add additional points on top of this particular one. So we'll go in here, we'll click another one here and right click to finish. And then we'll go back up here, click it again. We'll add two more points on both these corners and then we'll right click and finish off there and one more and make sure you're on that plus, because if you're not, you will create an additional uh, point layer. And I'll show you what happens if you're not. What will happen is that you'll go here and then you'll see another layer gets created right there, which is not the worst thing in the world, but it's not what we want in this case. All right, so we'll highlight this layer again. As you can see here, you're gonna click on this show planar surface, and we're just gonna bring this to the middle. And we're gonna grab one of these, things and bring it to roughly the size. I know it's not in perspective, but we're gonna fix that in one second. Now, just grab one of these corners and we're just gonna drag it to roughly around where we think the screen is going to be. There you go. You wanna kind of make sure it covers the whole of the screen, even if it uh, goes past the edges. We can fix that later if you wanna keep the uh, you know, the corners in place, but you want to make sure it overlaps just a teeny little bit. All right, that's pretty good. Now we'll come down here to this little section where there's a lot of little doodads and that stuff like that. So in this instance, because it's not a flat shot and it does sort of spin, like we'll just move forward and you can kind of see it does kind of move with the perspective. So we're going to click perspective. Large motion is fine. Small motion. These are just fine tweaks you can use if you need it. And then we're gonna to come to this little section here 
Uh, the only buttons we need to be concerned about are these ones at this point. And we're going to press this button, which is just going to track everything forward for us automatically. So let's click on this and we'll just have to wait for a little bit. Now, while we're waiting for that stuff to track, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, the Lyric Video Creator Kit, which is a fantastic product that I created myself and I use every single day. 22 customizable animated text presets you can drag and drop into your Premiere timeline, ready to blow up that client project, metaphorically speaking. No After Effects skills necessary. So what are you waiting for? Grab that Lyric Video Creator Kit today and get started. All right, so the track's done. It looks like it's holding on pretty well. Uh, if we check the layer, we can kind of see where the screen is. We can put this grid pattern up to see if we're getting it right. Looks like it's holding really, really well. There's a little bit of slippage here and there, but it's not gonna be noticeable, I don't think, in the final comp. So that's looking pretty good. All right, let's save it. And then we'll exit Mocha. So we'll just click the X button up here and go back to After Effects itself. Now. This is probably where people get a little bit stuck. The tracking data is all in there, uh, which is fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right here and go new and then solid and make sure it's exactly the same size as the comp. Then we'll just make this phone screen and we'll call it phone screen pre-comp stretch. You'll see why I call it stretch in a second. All right, we'll get that and we're actually going to copy that name and we're going to pre-comp it itself. So if you don't know how to pre-comp, it's new, it's composition, sorry, it's layer. And then we go down to pre-compose and we'll just type in pre-comp stretch and then we'll do that. Now that's fantastic. And all that does is just put a white into there. And we're going to see why in a second. Let's go back to the footage and we've got our tracking data here and we're going to go create tracking data. We're going to select layer one, which is what we just used. And then we're going to go corner pin with motion support and we're going to pick the layer we're going to put and it's going to be phone screen comp stretch and we're going to apply export and that looks pretty good so as you can see we've just replaced our comp with the white screen which is you know not bad and um it looks like it's holding quite well which is what we want to see all right so let's jump in here into our pre-comp stretch now for example if you want to create a phone screen um, let's just say we create one for our background here. We'll pick a really ugly yellow here. Let's actually make this a just slightly different color so you can understand what I'm saying. So we'll change the color of this to just say red, just so it's a bit easier to see. So if we go through here, you can kind of see it becomes red. Now say I want to do something really wacky and put an iPhone screen on this Samsung phone, obviously. So let's drag our iPhone screen and bring it in here. Now we'll stretch it up so it's like the edges of the frame. Um, actually, we can just go right click and we can go fit to width, I mean fit to height, and that'll automatically just bring it to the middle there. Now, if we go back into the track shot, you can kind of see that it's all stretched, which is kind of no good. So the easiest way to fix that is to, what I would like to do, and you could probably do this with anything you want, is I would actually pre-compose this. So we go composition and then layer, pre-compose this into its own layer, and we'll leave all attributes in here, and we'll go like um, iPhone screen, and we go okay and if we jump in here we can put whatever we like in here we can even put a little you know it just means that we can modify things in here and we know it's going to look the way it's going to look on the screen from here so we go hello hello everyone and obviously we'll make this a slightly nicer font that everybody can read hello everyone and then if we come back here, but obviously it's it's still stretched. So how we solve this is we come back in here to our pre-comp and we go right click transform and go fit to comp and that'll actually stretch everything out. Now it looks kind of gross here, but if you go back in here, everything will look completely fine. And so as you can see, everything gets tracked in really nice. And what's great about this is you only have to change this screen here. And so what you have to do is like, if you want to add animation stuff, you can just come in here. We'll just add a quick animation right here i'm using a tool called motion to basically create my null in case you guys are wondering but and there you go you can kind of see that animation just play out in the big screen there so there we go or we can make it something even funnier iphone's rule go back to the track shot 
And there you go. Now, the last thing I'd probably suggest is actually trying to make this screen actually fit into the shot. This looks a bit stretched as well, as you can see, like it doesn't quite fit. But if this was the proper dimensions for an iPhone screen, you'd probably get it to look exactly the way you want it to. So, but um, the last thing I'd probably do is add a curves effect just to bring the brightness down just a touch. And um, because this is just a little bit bright compared to everything around, like look at the screen versus that screen, you want it to be about the same resolution. I mean, the same brightness as that screen. Maybe we'll bring the blacks up just a touch as well, just so that it's not exactly. Um, there we go, it's not looking too bad. Yeah, there we go, that kind of looks like it fits in with the actual shot itself. And if there's one trick I want to share with you guys that has bailed me out over the years, it's this one. Check it out.